Okay, so here's another direct inverse, direct and or inverse variation word problem. This one happens to be a direct proportionality, and it states here that Hooke's law, Hooke's law states that the force F required to stretch a spring X units beyond its natural length is directly proportional to X, and then it's going to ask us to solve some problems. Um, I said in the last video, I want to make sure you get it here, that the truth of it is, if you saw this in physics or chemistry or bio, any of these problems, you probably wouldn't see A and B. You just see parts C and D. A, the A and B part are the parts that we need to figure out on our own, so when we see them in other classes, we can accomplish those things. So it says express F as a function of X by means of a formula that involves a constant of proportionality K. Um, this one is actually really straightforward. Usually I would rewrite this and I'd say, okay, remember that if it's a direct variation is going to take this form and I would say to you remember that the descriptor that comes before the words proportional is y and everything else is x but in this case it's really really easy because just by doing this it says f is so f is y so f and then here this doesn't seem like much to do and much ado about nothing. This should be really, really easy for you by now, and I hope that it is. If not, please go back to the first two videos and, and watch them. It says here, here, portion B, a weight of 4 pounds stretches a certain spring from its natural length of 10 inches to a length of 10.3 inches. Find the value of K in part A. So, start off with this. We say that, that F is equal to K times X. X here takes a little bit of extra work because we end up with a length of 10.3 from an original length of 10. So we're, to find the distance, we're going to take the 10.3 minus the 10. Do a little bit of simple math here, and we should get that F. That F is equal to K times point. We also know that the F value is 4, so I can substitute that, so 4 here. A little quick division, we get that K is, no it's not, K is, K is equal to 4 divided by 0.3. Remember this is 3 tenths, and right now we have a complex fraction with that, without it looking like one, but we do. This is 3 tenths, so if we simplify this out, this would be that K is equal to 40 thirds. Okay, this is what they're asking you for in this part of the question, so on the final exam and on your quizzes, that's, this is what I would be looking for. I would expect it in this form right here, but you know what, while we're here, why don't we make the specific formula, and the specific formula says F is equal to K times X, but now we know what K is, and K is 40 over 3. You can put the X out here if you'd like. A cleaner look would be put it up here. I know uh, some of you had said this looks a little bit like an inverse variation, but in an inverse variation, they get the variable goes at the goes in the denominator, not in the numerator. So we don't have that. So I think we're in really good shape now. Question C: What weight will stretch a spring in part B to a length of 11.5 inches? So the weight is the force, right? So force is equal to k, which is 40 thirds times 1.5 over 1, right? Isn't that true here? And some quick algebra, this goes on itself once, this goes in, to, goes in twice, so it would take 20 pounds, wouldn't it? We could test this backwards and say, that 20 is equal to is equal to 40 thirds times 1.5 and it is so that does work so F is 20 pounds so what weight so 20 pounds would do it so 20 pounds uh, as you can tell, I did not do this problem in advance, so I'm looking, golly, did I do that right? But I think I did. I think we're all right. Uh, the next part, and like I said before, parts C and part D are the parts I think you're most likely to see in a physics or uh, bio or, or 
chemistry class, I'm going to ask you to do parts A and B. I think they're going to assume that you know that. So go back there. What does this thing look like? Well, it looks like this. We have F is equal to 40 thirds X. So, so Y is equal to 40 thirds X. So just a couple places that we know it's a direct variation. We know when x is 0. Oh, it says for values y here because this is distance, and distance can't be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So we take the point, let x be 0. Well, if x is 0, you'd have the point 0, 0, wouldn't you? 0, 0. Uh, if I was going to graph this, I would pick some x value, some next x value that, that was a multiple of 3, like maybe 9. So y, that's 4. Uh, y equals 40 thirds, choose 9 arbitrarily, so we have the point x is 9, 9 what? Well, 9, 3 goes into itself once, it goes into 9 3 times, we get the point 3, 40, 3, 40, so 3, 1, 2, 3, 40, oh, that's not true, 9, 40, 9, 40, 9, 40, almost messed that up. 940. Let me graph it like this. Right? Okay. Oh, good. Go back and try the, another point just to see how we're doing. And we could say, uh, we take the point 20. 20, that's me checking this again. I'm really curious if I mess that up. 20. So we have 20x is 20, so we have the point 20. And, oh, I did that backwards, sorry. It will be 1.5, I'm going to do it backwards. I think I'm going to get too carried away and waste too much of your time. Okay, I think this is good. Remember, if you just follow the steps, one, two, three, that you're, what you're really aiming at is being able to do these parts right here. Keep studying. Please watch the other videos, especially the first two. It's really, really important that you can set these things up. Take good notes on them, I promise you. It's going to pay off on the quizzes, please. Did I mention studying, taking good notes? Did I? I meant to. Study!